this is my last video for the day. I don't know what order you guys did things in, but this is math, and it's short. It's not, um, there's not a lot new, but there is something that I want to go over concerning um, making change with money. But your targets for today are, I can recall answers to multiplication and division facts. I hope you are practicing those. I can solve subtraction problems with zeros in the mini wind. And remember, the mini wind in a subtraction problem is the very biggest number. And I can relate everyday objects to solid geometric shapes. And that one is a review all the way back probably from kindergarten. The first thing that we're going to do is count from 35 to 105 by 10. So by 10. So if we count from 35 to 105 by tens, we're going to change the number in the tens place. So when we do that, we would say 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. We only change the number in the tens place when we count by tens. Next, we're going to count by five, from five to 60 by fives, because if you can count from five to 60 by fives, guess what? You know your five multiplication facts. You also can tell time by fives on the clock. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. If you can do that, you can do your five multiplication facts. And the last one, we're going to count by fours from four to 48. And again, if you can count by fours to 48, you can do your four multiplication facts. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. 34, 48, and I know some of you could keep going, but we're stopping at 48. The next thing I want you to do is find the missing factor in each of these problems. So, either write it on your paper or figure it out and say it. I want to know how many fives are in 25, and if I don't know that in my head, I can put up my fist and I can count by fives until I say 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. How many fingers are up? 5. So, missing factor is 5. Alright, I have another one with a missing factor. I want to know how many 5s are in 45. Again, if I don't know it in my head, I can use my fingers and count by fives until I say 45. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And how many fingers are up? 9. So 9 times 5 makes 45. And the last one, I want to know how many fives are in 50. Well, if I look, I have a 5 and a 5. But then I have a zero placeholder. So how many fives are in five? One with a zero placeholder. And if you didn't know that when you took in, count it by, five, by fives until you said 50. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Now we have up 10 fingers. All right, for the next couple of problems, you will need a piece of paper or a whiteboard. First problem I want you to practice is, let me make sure I wrote that down correctly. Yes, 4,000 or 6,000 take away 4,000. And you probably don't need a piece of paper to do that one. 4,000 take away 6,000. You have all of those zeros. Nothing is bigger on bottom, so you just subtract, and the difference is 2,000. All right, let's do this one, and with this one, you will need that piece of paper or that whiteboard. So write it down, pause it, work it out, and when you have your answer, turn the video back on. 
if I look at the bottom in the ones column, because I always start in the smallest value column, that's the ones in this problem, the bottom is bigger. And because the bottom is bigger, I need to borrow, but there's nothing next door to borrow from. So I'm going to borrow a group of 10. So if I borrow one group of 10, I now have 39 10s and 10 ones in the ones column. 10 take away 2 is 8, 9 take away 5 is 4, 3 take away nothing is 3. Later this week, or later, before the end of the year, we're going to talk about checking subtraction with addition and checking addition with subtraction. And to do that, I would say 348, I would take my difference, and I would add my subtrahend. And when I do that, I should get the same meaning end. And if my answers match, then I did my problem correctly. All right, the next one is a review on Roman numerals. And if you've forgotten your Roman numerals, guys, I printed, sent this through to your parents. It's a math fact or math measurement little cheat sheet for a better word. It's like what you have in the back of your English book that helps you with your abbreviations. But I did forget to put the freezing temperature. So if you'll put the freezing temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's freezing. And remember 212 degrees Fahrenheit is boiling. If you'll add both of those to your sheet, if you need to, some of them may already have that memorized in your brain. If you do, that's fantastic. This is just a reference tool for you to use. Today you're going to practice Roman numerals. So I want you to write the following numbers using Roman numerals. The first one I want you to write is the number five. What number, what Roman numeral equals the Arabic number five? And you should have said V. All right, the next one I want you to write is eight. Well, it's more than five, but it's less than 10. So I'm going to start with five and add six, seven, eight. All right, the next one I want you to practice is 50. And I won't tell you a story. I'm going to be honest. I always have trouble remembering 50 and 500. And 50 is the letter L. 20. How do I write the Roman numeral 20? These are Arabic, and I want to convert it to Roman. I need to say 10, 20. All right, 25. If I know how to write 20, and I know how to write 5, I just put 10, 20, and then add 5. And the last one is 100. How do I write the Roman numeral 100? And if you said C, you are correct. Now, your place value. I'm going to say some numbers, and I want you to write them on your paper. Because in a few lessons, we're going to add another place value holder. I want you to write 30,890, and that's not a trick, 30,890. So you would write 30, comma, 890. Because this is 10,000, this is thousand, hundreds, tens, ones. All right, the next one is a mixed number, eight and a half. Eight and a half. That means I need a whole number, eight, and a fraction, one half. Mixed number, whole number and a fraction. 
All right, the next one, $80.21. $80.21. Well, don't forget your dollar sign. $80, and don't forget your decimal point to separate the dollars from the change. Remember, anything to the left is dollars. Anything to the right is cents. Anything to the right is less than a dollar. This is one one hundredth of a dollar because it takes a hundred pennies to make a dollar. And this is two tenths of a dollar. That's two dimes. And it takes ten dimes to make a dollar. And the last one, 6,004. 6,004. I'm going to put the six under the thousand spot. No hundreds, no tens, four ones. 6,004. Okay, so today is still review, but we're working with money. And like I told you in yesterday's lesson, there's something that I want to touch on with money, and it has to do with when you're getting change back and there's no cents, C-E-N-T-S, in what you give the cashier. All right, so the first couple of problems I'm going to read to you, and you use your mathematical thinking and write it down your answer on your paper or your board. Dad bought firewood for the campfire. The firewood cost $5 for one bundle. Dad bought four bundles. How much money does Dad need? So he's buying firewood that costs $5 for each bundle, and he buys four bundles. So... How many bundles did he buy? He bought four bundles. And your magic word in there is each bundle costs five dollars. So how much money does he need? Four bundles at five dollars each. Four groups of five equal. If you don't know, you can either count your fours five times or you can count your fives four times. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, or 5, 10, 15, 20. So he's going to need $20. If Dad has only $10 bills in his wallet, how many will he need to give the clerk? So he needs to give her $20. And he only has $10. How many bills will he need to give the clerk? So if I count by tens until I say 20, I would say 10, 20. How many bills does he need to give the clerk? And the answer is 2. 20 divided by $10 bills equals 2 $10 bills. All right, let's do another one. Mom bought a bag of marshmallows for the campfire. Sounds like somebody's going to be roasting some marshmallows tonight. Mom gave the clerk $5, but the marshmallows only cost $3. How much change will mom get back? So mom gives her $5, but the marshmallows only cost $3. Please notice that I line up my change, I line up my decimal, I line up my dollars. And then I subtract to determine the change she gets back. Zero pennies, zero dimes, $2. So she'll get $2 in change. Stephen bought two bags of trail mix for $3 each and a drink for $2. How much money does he need? Use your mathematical thinking and the language of the problem. If you have the paper in front of you, underline the important information and we can solve this in two ways. 
One way is that we can draw a picture of what he's buying and label it. So he's buying two bags of trail mix. This is the trail mix. And they cost $3 a piece. And then he buys a drink for $2. If I want to know how much money he needs, what do I do with the numbers in this problem? Well, I'm going to add them to find the total, like I would at the cash register. Three plus three is six. Six plus two is eight. He needs eight dollars. Now, some of you heard the word each in that problem, and I'm going to show you how you could write this problem and still get the same answer, but using multiplication. He bought two bags of trail mix and each bag cost $3. So this represents my trail mix. Two bags each cost $3. Then he also added a drink for $2. When you do math that includes parentheses, you do what's in the parentheses first. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. Same answer, different routes. Same answer, different routes. This just shows that I use multiplication over addition, and this shows that I drew a model. You do what works for you. If you need to draw the model to show the trail mix and the drink, then do that. If you're ready for the next step, then do that. I want you to do what works best for you. Okay? The last one. What bills could he use to pay? He's spending $8.00. And he's giving exact change. What's the fewest amount of bills that he can use to pay? Well, he could start with a five, and then he could put six, seven, eight. So he could do a five and three ones. But now I'm going to give you a different problem. If Stephen pays with two five dollar bills, how much change will he get back? There are a couple of ways to solve this one as well. He has two $5 bills, and he's going to spend $8. So I could say that he has two $5 bills, and he spends $8. That's like a long combination like you do on your math pages. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 minus 8 equals 2 he'd get back $2. I can also change this to look like this. And I wish I could hear your voices because I'm sure somebody could yell at me how I could change this to look like this. How many $5 bills does he have? Well, he has two. And I'm going to put this in parentheses because right now I'm just talking about the $5 bills. He has two $5 bills, and then he spends $8. Do what's in parentheses first. Two times five is 10. 10 take away eight equals two. Same answer, different paths. Okay, I erased what I had up there. Oh my goodness, okay. So this is the um, target about 3D shapes. If I have a ball, what is the mathematical name for a ball? And if you screamed out sphere, you would be correct. A can of soup. What's the mathematical term for a can? If you screamed out cylinder, you would be correct. All right, let's look at another one. Okay. 
This is like a um, block or a brick. The mathematical name for a block or a brick is, or what shape is this face? It's a rectangle. And because it's 3D, we call it a rectangular prism. Not to be confused with this one that has a square face, and it is called a cube. This has a rectangular face, this has a square face. Rectangular prism and cube. Now the last thing I want to do is talk for just a minute about when you make change. Today's problems all ended with zeros in the change the sense column, but that's not going to always happen. Let's say that we started with $10, and we're going to spend $7.65. Make sure when you write your problem that your cents line up, your decimals line up, and your dollars line up. You always start in the smallest value column, and this would actually be the one cent or one hundredth place because I'd need a hundred pennies here if I had a dollar. This is one tenth or the dime column because it takes ten dimes to make a dollar. Now the problem is if I start here, the bottom is bigger and I need to borrow and there's nothing for me to borrow across here because all of these are zeros. So I'm going to borrow a dollar from the ten and I'm going to put a 1 here, and that makes 100. But I still have not fixed this. I still, I can say 100 minus 65, but I still have a bigger number in the bottom on the pennies row, or the hundreds row. So now I'm going to borrow a dime, and this is going to become 10 pennies. 10 take away 5 is 5. 9 dimes Take away six dimes, leaves three dimes, so that's 35 cent. Nine take away seven equals two. So my answer is $2.35. This is five hundredths of a dollar because I have five cents. This is three tenths of a dollar because I have 30 cents here. And then this is two whole dollars. Uh, that's Leo being sick. Okay. Let's try another one. Let's say that we had $7 and we spend $4.28. Make sure your pennies and dimes are aligned, your decimal point is aligned, and your dollars are aligned. I know that the bottom is bigger and I have to borrow, but I cannot borrow from my dime because I don't have any. So I'm going to borrow a dollar. And this gives me 100 cents. I still haven't moved anything to the pennies column. So now I'm going to borrow a dime. That leaves nine dimes. This becomes 10 pennies. 10 take away 8 equals 2. 9 take away 2 equals 7. Decimal, 6 take away 4 equals 2. $2.72. Let's do one more, and you can turn off the video and work this, and then turn the video back on to see if you got it correct. And let's don't do eight, we'll just do eight. Okay, now you try it. Eight dollars, take away three dollars, seventy-six cents. Line up your pennies, which are the hundredths. Your dimes are the tenths, and then your dollars. Okay? The bottom is bigger, so I'm going to have to borrow, but I have no dimes to borrow from, so I'm going to have to borrow a whole dollar. So when I borrow a dollar, I have seven dollars, and I have 100 cents. But I still have nothing in the pennies column or the hundreds column to subtract from. So I'm going to borrow a dime and move 10 pennies. 10 take away 6 is 4. 
9 take away 7 is 2, decimal. 7 take away 3 is 4, $4.24. 24 cents. 24 cents is less than a dollar. This is four hundredths, that's four out of a hundred pennies. That's two tenths, that's 20 cent out of a hundred cent. And then this is four dollars, four dollars, 24 cents. Now, if you didn't get that today, am I worried? Am I upset? Am I disappointed? No. How many times have we done this? The number of times you see on the board. Is it going away? No. But will we continue to practice it? Yes. Okay. Your assignment is to complete workbook pages 291 and 292. Am I correct? Yes, I was flipping the wrong way. 291, 292. You're going to be making change. You're going to be rounding to the nearest 10. That means you have to have the zero in the ones place. You're going to be multiplying, following a rule, adding, following a rule. And you know what? I think that I didn't give an instruction on number one on page 292. So look at number one. Number one on 292 says to look at the number word. Mark under the box that has the combination that means the same as the number word. So you are good. I'm fine. I thought I had left something out. But look at the number word and then find the box that matches that number word. I think you will be okay except on... Seven, I mean eight, nine, and ten, and I will send that through in an email. I apologize. Okay, so 291, 292, and I will send the instructions for numbers eight, nine, and ten. All right, have a good rest of the day, guys. Love you bunches. Miss you bunches.